So in this lecture, I'm going to explain the role of the novel drugs, Ivacaftor and Lumacaftor in cystic fibrosis. Now, you know, cystic fibrosis is an autosomal recessive condition and it's a multi-organ disease in which the basic problem is that there are very thick secretions, especially uh, in the linings of the airways. Uh, the secretions are so thick that the kids they get repeated chest infections and usually the quality of their life is very poor because they suffer from repeated infections and they have to be given repeated courses of antibiotics to treat different types of infections. Uh, these secretions are colonized by uh, Staphylococcus aureus, by Pseudomonas aurei uh, aeruginosa and Burkle hildiria and uh, because of that usually they also suffer from failure to thrive there are other organs involved as well like uh, the gastrointestinal system is also involved and so far the traditional therapy has focused on treatment of these infections and all the supportive management which includes giving them good nutrition giving them digestive enzymes and treating infections as and when they arrive now since 2017 now we have got two novel drugs ivacaftrin and lumacaftrin which has changed the management of cystic fibrosis and these are considered to be specific drugs because they basically target the underlying pathophysiology in cystic fibrosis so let's discuss about uh, these two drugs how do they act however for that you need to understand the basic pathophysiology now the basic pathophysiology in cystic fibrosis is that the chloride channels are faulty now this is the structure of the chloride channel the chloride channel is responsible for sending the chloride ions out of the cell so this is the cell membrane this is the chloride channel and when this channel is working it would shift the chloride ions from inside of the cell to outside now this channel is composed of different proteins and this channel is encoded part of this channel is encoded by the cftr gene now the cftr gene which is present on the long arm of chromosome 7 cftr so this stands for cystic fibrosis transmembrane regulator gene. Now, if this gene is faulty, what happens? This gene actually signals the uh, production of a protein which is part of this. So this part that you are seeing here, this part of the protein, that is signaled by the CFTR gene. So if the CFTR gene is faulty and there are mm, uh, around six different uh, types of mutations that can affect the CFTR gene, and that can result in a variety of problems within this protein. So either this protein would be deficient or this protein would be faulty or this protein is not properly formed. So if this protein is not properly formed, what would happen? This chloride channels which are formed within the cells and they have to be properly formed before they are upregulated. Upregulated means they would be formed inside the cell and then they come on the surface of the cell membrane. And once they come on the surface of the cell membrane only, then they would be able to pump the chloride ions from inside the cell to outside. Now, if the CFTR gene is uh, has got problems like a mutation or deletion, which happens in cystic fibrosis, so part of this protein would not be formed or this protein would be deficient. So when this is deficient, this whole channel is deficient in structure. So what would happen? This channel, when being formed inside the cell, this would not come up to the cell surface. We call it upregulation. So the upregulation is faulty. When the upregulation is faulty, you have got less chloride channels on the cell surface. When you've got less chloride channels on the cell, sur cell surface, it means they would be less able to pump the chloride out of the cells, uh, uh, so, uh, from inside the cells to outside of the cells. Now, at the same time, when this protein is functioning it has also got an associated function with the e voltage gated sodium channels enac so it stands for e voltage gated sodium channels and when this opens when the chloride goes out it also regulates the sodium channels but if this is faulty let's say if this is not working so what would happen this channel would remain permanently open when this is permanently open all the sodium would go inside sodium would go inside as you can see in this diagram over here so here you can see a faulty chloride channel. This is a faulty chloride channel. Why? Because you can see the protein is missing here. Why the protein is missing here? The CFTR gene has got some issues. In other words, this is cystic fibrosis. So in a cystic fibrosis, I told you there are six classes of mutations. And these six classes of mutation can lead to different problems in the uh, chloride channel. Like for example, class three mutations, they lead to gating problems. Like these gates are faulty. Class 2 mutations, which are the most common, which are known as Delta F508, they cause 
part of this whole thing to go missing because the protein is not properly formed. So what would happen if this protein is faulty? Number one, there would be problem with upregulation. So very few receptors would be able to come up to the cell surface. Number one. Number two, they would not be able to open properly. So when they are not opening properly, what would happen? Chloride, which is supposed to go out of the cell, that cannot happen. So chloride would remain inside the cell. And chloride remains uh, inside the cell. There is a permanent opening because this is coupled with this e nac uh, e voltage sodium channels, and the sodium channel would remain open. So what would happen? All the sodium would start coming in. So when the sodium starts coming in, what would happen? Sodium is osmotically active, so it would draw water inside. So when water goes inside, especially if this is an uh, uh, what you call a cavitary epithelium, like for example endothelial surfaces. So there is mucus here. This mucus water would go inside. When mucus water goes inside, it would become thick. It would become viscid, and a thick mucus is very difficult to move. So even if there are cilia here, it would not be able to move the mucus. Especially that happens in the airways. So there is thick mucus which cannot be, um, you know, uh, moved by the cilia. So this big thick mucus becomes a very rich medium for bacteria. That's why these kids they get repeated bacterial infections. The same goes in pancreas as well. The pancreas. If this is the pancreas organ, what would happen? The sodium and the water moves inside. There is very thick uh, secretions, and these uh, you know pancreatic juices, which contain digestive enzyme, they are, they cannot move. So they would remain inside the pancreas. And what would happen? The child would not get the digestive enzyme. So the food that he's taking would not be digested, and he would suffer from bile absorption. He would suffer from chronic diarrhea. In another word, that would lead to failure to thrive. So what happens in a faulty chloride channel? you can see that the chloride cannot move out the sodium moves in so what would happen less water on the mucous surfaces which mean thick secretion which mean repeated infections number two uh, the other problem with the, this thing is that the voltage here let's say you if this is voltage which is uh, usually negative especially in nasal endothelium what would happen as the sodium goes inside so more positive charges are going inside so this negative charge would increase and this is one of the basis of diagnosis as well that more than minus 24.7 millivolt of transnasal uh, potential difference is diagnostic for cystic fibrosis so coming back to the thing so that this area is faulty because there is no protein or deficient protein over here now these two drugs evacaftrin and lumacaftrin they target these areas they target these areas so in other words they would either potentiate or correct the chloride channel now coming first to lumacaftor. Now lumacaftor is known as corrector drug. Why it is known as corrector? Because lumacaftor drug itself binds to this area where there was a protein and this protein has gone missing. This protein has gone missing because of the CFTR gene mutation or deletion which occurs in cystic fibrosis. So this area is faulty. There is no protein here. So instead of this area being kept empty the luma cafter it attaches to this area and when it attaches to this area it makes this chloride channel normal and when this chloride channel becomes normal it gets upregulated upregulated mean instead of remaining inside the cell it would go up on the cell surface so we call it as corrector corrector means that it has corrected the faulty sodium channel so this faulty sodium channel would be upregulated and you will get the normal numbers of chloride channel on the cell surface so when you got normal number of uh, chloride channels and they are now normal because the drug itself has bound to the area where there was a protein now the chloride channel would function normally and this would reverse the pathophysiology which happens in cystic fibrosis so lumacaftor is the corrector drug now lumacaftor actually upregulates the receptors because it has corrected the structure of the uh, chloride channel Ivacaftor, uh, on the contrary, is a potentiator. Now, Ivacaftor does not correct the structure of the chloride channel. What it does, it binds to specific sites on the chloride channel and it potentiates. Potentiates mean that it helps in opening of this channel. It helps to keep the channel open. So when the channel is open, the chloride ions would be able to move out of the cell in other words 
the chloride channel would start functioning normally. And you know that basic problem in cystic fibrosis is number one, defective structure of the chloride channel and defective gating. Gating means that it cannot, the gate cannot open and close properly. So the gate remains closed, it doesn't open. So one drug, Lumacaftor, which is a corrector drug, it corrects the structure of the chloride channel, which occurs in certain types of uh, mutations, especially Delta F508 uh, mutations. And the Ivacaftor especially helps in class three mutations, the gating problems in which there is no problem with the structure, but there is problem with the opening of the channels. So Avacaftor is a potentiator because it helps in the potentiation of this uh, channel and keeps it open so that the chloride can move from inside of the cell to outside. These day, uh, uh, days, in certain types of cystic fibrosis, you've got problems both with the gating of the chloride channel as well as the structure of the chloride channel. So a combination of Avacaftor and Lumacaftor is given. So remember when the uh, cystic fibrosis specialists are prescribing these medications, it is very important to understand which types of mutations or which type, which class of mutations have occurred because whether you have to give a Ivacaftor, whether you have to give Lumacaftor, or whether you have to give a combination of these two depends uh, on which type of underlying mutation is present. So class three mutations where there's only problem with the gating of the chloride channels Ivacaftor is prescribed solely. Where there is a problem both with gating and with the structure of the chloride channel, then a combination of Ivacaftor and Lumacaftor is given. And these days it is present in uh, combination therapy. Since 2017, FDA has approved Ivacaftor alone as well as Ivacaftor and Lumacaftor combination for the treatment of cystic fibrosis. So just to summarize it, Ivacaftor is a potentiated drug which actually binds with the chloride channels and helps in keeping the chloride channels open. So it addresses if there are gating problems with the chloride channel. Lumacaftor on the other hand is the corrector drug. So it attaches to those sites on the chloride channels where there was a protein or the protein is faulty and it helps in correcting the structure of the chloride channel. And once the, correct, uh, the structure is corrected, it is upregulated it goes onto the uh, surface of the cell membrane and can start its function so once the chloride channels are normal in structure and in function you have basically addressed the underlying pathophysiology in cystic fibrosis and because of these two novel drugs children now have a chance to live a normal life like their normal counterparts Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you have understood the mechanism of action of Ivacaftor and Lumacaftor, which are the novel drugs in cystic fibrosis. Still, if you've got any questions, please put your question down in, in the comment sections below, and I will try my level best to answer it as soon as possible. And before I leave, those of you uh, who are meeting me for the first time, my name is Dr. Sayed Kasmi and uh, this is my youtube channel so if you haven't subscribed please subscribe if you have liked this video uh, give me a thumbs up and uh, share it with your friends uh, have a very good day and bye bye